Welcome, boys and ghouls. Wilmington Community Television presents Night of the Living Dead, based on the original screenplay by George Romero, adapted by Ryan Maliar. Tonight's cast includes Lori Leone as the narrator, that's me, Jen Kennedy as Barbara, Bob Hamill as Ben, Jennifer Tassoni as the radio announcer, Joe Haley as Johnny and Tom, Colleen Norton as Helen, Melina Leone as Judy, Paul Mason as Harry, Don Laird as the sheriff, Mary Laird as the deputy, and Maeve Kennedy as Karen. Once upon a time, there was a world where people walked at night and were not afraid, where churchyards were places of rest. This is a story about the end of that world. The year is 1968, the place Butler, Pennsylvania. We interrupt this. Stay. Citizens, be warned. Well, this is terrific. We've been driving for hours to find this crummy boneyard, and now the radio dies. It could be the trees, Johnny. Maybe, you know, they're blocking the waves or something. Well, excuse me. I didn't know I was in the presence of an electronics expert. Maybe you can use your vast knowledge of radio and navigation to find your old man's final resting place. Driving 200 miles to put a wreath on the grave of someone I don't even remember isn't my idea of a fun Sunday. Well, look, it's only once a year and it makes Mom happy. Look, there it is on the left. If you turn into the drive and go to the top of the hill, it'll be around there somewhere. Oh, do you remember where the grave is? I'm not too sure and it is getting dark. You're the expert. Look at for yourself. I've been doing all the driving, remember? Oh, there it is. Oh, look at all these weeds. Whoever the caretaker is really needs to do a better job around here. Yeah, well, it looks like your prayers have been answered. Where? I don't see anyone. Well, that's because he's not really there. He's a spook. He comes out of the grave and then hides until you get right on top of him. And then he pounces. <laughs> oh, now I see him. He's coming over. Shut up, he'll hear you. He doesn't care. The dead don't care. The dead don't even hear. Did you know that, little sister? When you're dead, the first thing that goes is your eardrums. The worms get in, and then they eat them as a delicacy. And then they use the channels to breed in. You're disgusting. Look, here he comes. I'm going to talk to him about cleaning up this place. They're coming to get you, Barbara. Stop it. You're ignorant. They're coming for you, Barbara. Stop it. You're acting like a child. They're coming for you. Look, here comes one of them now. He'll hear you. Here he comes. I'm getting out of here. Well, where are you going? I'm going back to the car. You two can fight it out. Um, excuse me, but do you work here? If you could, what what, what are you doing? Ah, Johnny, help me! Hey, ah! hey, you crazy degenerate, get off of her! Run, Barbara! Get the car started! You, you let go of me! Hey, what are, what are you doing? Put, put me down! No! Ah! Barbara ran, but Johnny didn't. He was too busy fighting the man, if man it was. A man with staring eyes and a body that stank more than any living body should. The body that overpowered Johnny's younger, stronger one, ripping out his throat, smashing his skull on a rock, then delving deep inside. Oh God, oh God, where are these keys? Oh no, Johnny still got them. Johnny, come on, oh no! Barbara looked for her brother. She saw him and the thing that straddled his body, its face smeared with blood. She did not wonder where the blood came from, for she could see the gap and hole in her brother's neck. Frantically scanning the horizon, the young girl saw a small farmhouse about 100 yards distant. To the left of the house was a gas pump. Barbara ran. She ran until the solid wooden door of the farmhouse barred her flight. Help! Oh! Please help me! Oh, for God's sakes, help me! Let me in! Open this door! Damn you! My God, it's open! Where? Where's the light switch? Oh, God. Is anyone home? Please! There's a mad to call the police. Where's the phone? There it is. Hello? Hello? Why don't you answer? Let's try the radio. Dead. Is everything dead in this place? Will somebody tell me what's going on? I'm coming. I'm coming. Please help me. There's a mad man coming to get me. Keep away from me. Are you one of them? What? Don't come any closer. They're all around. Some of them kind of look like you. What's wrong with you? My brother is dead, and the man who killed 
Quantum is out sitting under one of those trees as if nothing happened. You just stand there. Let me take a look at you. All right, you're okay. Get inside, quick now. Listen, I'm not gonna hurt you. I ain't one of them creeps. Name's Ben. Don't worry about that guy outside. There's lots more where he came from. We'll be okay if I can just get some gas. My truck's just about dry. You got the key to the pump out there? What? The gas pump out front. It's locked. Give me the key so we can gas up and go. It's the only chance we got. Look, I don't know what you're talking about. I don't live here. My brother's dead. You're talking about gas pumps and my brother's out there with his throat torn out and the man who's killed him is sitting under a tree watching us. Ah, oh, heck. It's two of them now. They're smashing the headlights on my truck. Well, soon they're going to be others. They know we're here. But who are they? Not who. What? I don't know. Don't know what? Who they are. Not who. What? I don't know. Don't know what? Who they are. Not who. What? I don't know. Suddenly, the front door flies open and a creature tries to enter. Ben tries to push it out the door, but grabs a hold of him with gnarled hands and throws him to the floor like a helpless ragdoll. The zombie doesn't want Ben. It wants Barbara. Me? Yes, you, Barbara. Ah! Another figure appears from the kitchen. Barbara tries to escape it, but there's no clear path. She's backed herself into a corner. Two creatures are reaching for her, and there's no way out. No way out! No way out. <coughs> but Ben is there just in time. He grabs a crowbar and smashes it against the first monster's head and it drops to the floor, shattering the creature's skull. Damn, they know we're here. I am gonna get all of you, you filthy, sucking green pond scum maggots. I will get you all. Now turn on that radio. See if you can get some news. There is an epidemic of mass murder being committed by a virtual army of unidentified assassins. Eyewitnesses say the assassins are ordinary looking people. Some say they appear to be in some kind of a trance. Others describe them as being grotesque, misshapen monsters. Police, sheriff's deputies, and emergency vehicles are literally flooded with calls for help. The scene can be best described as mayhem. This is a warning for all citizens to stay in their homes, behind locked doors. Streets and highways are packed with frantic drivers attempting to get home or flee just anywhere. We repeat, the safest course of action at this time is to simply stay put wherever you are. Okay, forget about the gas for a while. We're going to have to hold up here for a bit. Now, you gotta, you got to snap out of it. Help me barricade these doors and windows, will you? I'm going to bust up every bit of furniture I can find and keep look for a hammer and some nails. What's your name, anyways? Barbara. All right, Barbara. Guess you've been through a terrible time, but for the love of God, you got to put it out of your mind for now. Take a look around the kitchen sink for a hammer while I start working on this furniture here. Oh, I found a hammer and a jar full of nails. Oh, that was fast, Barbara. Good girl. Bring them over here while I work on this window. You know, we're lucky this place ain't too big. What are those things out there? Don't hardly know. Don't hardly care. They ain't human. That's for sure. Might have been once, but no more, no sir. G give me a couple more nails. All I know is, won't be long before those things pound their way in here. They're afraid though now. They're afraid of fire. I found that out. Okay, this window's good. Let's go do the next one. There's a radio in my truck. I jumped in, listened to it. This big old gasoline truck came screaming down the road. Must have been 10, 15 of those things chasing after it, grabbing holding on. The truck was moving in a real funny way. Those things caught up to it. The truck went right through a billboard, ripped over a gas pump, never stopped moving. By now, it was a moving bonfire. Then the truck exploded. So I can still hear that driver screaming. Those things, they were just backing away from it. So let's board up this door now. We were riding in the cemetery, Johnny and me. We, we came to put a wreath on my father's grave, Johnny, and oh, oh, it's hot in here, it's hot. And then this man started walking up the road. He came slowly, 
And Johnny kept teasing me and saying, He's going to get you, Barbara. And I laughed at him and I said, Oh, Johnny, you stop it. And then Johnny ran away. And I went up to this man and I started to apologize. Keep, and Come on, please, just keep calm. And I looked and I said, Good evening. And he grabbed me. He grabbed me and he ripped at me. He held me and just, he ripped just at my Just calm car. down. And I screamed, Johnny! Johnny, help me! Oh, help me! And he wouldn't let me go. He ripped. And then Johnny came in and he ran and he ran and he fought this man. And I got so afraid I ran. I ran and I ran and Johnny didn't come. We thought, we have to wait for Johnny. We better go out and get him. We have to go out and get Johnny. He's out there. Please. Don't you hear me? We've got to go get him. Please. We've got to go get Johnny. Please help me, please. Don't you know what's going on out there? This ain't no Sunday school picnic. Don't you understand? My brother is alone. Barbara, your brother is dead. No, my brother is not dead. Barbara slaps Ben's face. Oh. Ben pauses and then slaps Barbara's face. Ow. Look. Sorry, honey bunny. Can you hear me? You don't look too good. I'm gonna carry you upstairs to one of those bedrooms. You'll be safe there. You lie down, rest. When you feel better, you come down here again and help me. I'm all right. I'd feel safer if I stayed with you. I can't stand the those thought of those things outside, waiting. I think I'm going mad. No, you're not going mad. Why don't you take a look around, some other wood. Try that closet over there. There's no wood, but there's something else. Oh, thank God there is something else. A rifle. Damn, that's good. See any shells? A whole box. Oh, that's great. You know, this could be a hell of a lot worse. It could. Yeah, turn, turn the radio on. Let's see if there's any more news. Huh? Latest bulletins from Emergency Central. The strange beings may attack at any time, at any place, without warning. If encountered, they are to be avoided or destroyed. These beings are flesh eaters and they eat the flesh of the victims they kill. Indeed, the principal characteristics of their onslaught is the depraved, insane quest for human flesh. I repeat, these alien beings are eating the flesh of their victims. We're gonna die! We're gonna die! We're gonna die! Like hell we are! Do I have to slap you again? I wanna get out of here! Well, sorry, honey bunny, you can't. We're sealed in, they're sealed out, and we gotta stay here until things change. Uh, the door over there! Probably leads to the cellar. What about it? It's opening! They're coming to get us! Oh crap, I didn't check the cellar. Give me the gun! Don't shoot! We're the same as you! Honest, mister, we're okay. We're, we're from town. My name's Harry Cooper. This young fella's Tom something or other. We've been hiding down in the cellar. Oh, that's great. And I've been up here working, trying to make this place safe. Well, you've been down there all this time, all tucked up, nice and cozy-like. Couldn't you hear the racket we were making up here? How are we supposed to know what was going on? Could have been those things trying to get in. Yeah, the undead practicing carpentry. Yeah, right. That girl was screaming. Surely you must know what a girl screaming sounds like. Of course I know what a girl screaming sounds like. And don't call me Shirley. Look, it's kind of hard to hear what's going on from down there. We thought we could hear her scream. And then for all we knew, that could have meant those things were in the house after her. And you wouldn't have come up and helped. Well, not if there were more of them. Look, mister, we came up, okay? We're here now. I suggest we all go back downstairs before any of those things find out we're in here. They can't get in here. You got the whole place boarded up? Well, yeah, most of it. All but a few spots upstairs. They won't be hard to fix. You're insane. The cell is the safest place. I'm telling you, they can't get in here. And I'm telling you, those things turned over our car. We were damn lucky to get away at all. Now you're telling me those things can't get through this lousy pile of wood? Harry's just a bit upset, mister. He has a wife and kid downstairs. The kids hurt pretty bad. Well, I am truly sorry about that, but I still think we are better off up here. Look, the cellar. The cellar is only one door, right? Just one door. That's all we have to protect. I have it fixed so it locks and bores from the inside. But up here, all these windows? Why, well, we never know where they're gonna hit us next. Suddenly, a zombie seizes Ben through a gap in the window. Ah! Get it off me! Get it off! The hammer! Anything! I got it! Uh, uh, well, 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 it's, it's, it's gone now. But it ain't dead yet. Oh, time to give this bad boy a try. Okay, you wanna play rough, huh? Okay, 
say hello to my little friend. You rotten hell, you damn piece of whatever you are. Well, mister, you blew his head clear off. Harry, Harry, are you all right? What's happening up there? It's all right. That settles it. Back to the cellar. Cellar, it's all yours, man. You just get out of my sight. You can go rot down there. We'll need food. Oh, yeah? Keep away from the refrigerator, or I'll blow your head off. You can have your cellar, everything that's in it. This floor and upstairs is my territory. And everything here, from the food to the radio, is mine. Tom, this man is crazy. Are you going to let him get away with it? We have a right to food. I'm going to stay up here. And, and you can, too. I've got a wife and sick kid down there. Yeah, well, I feel sorry for them, you know. From what I can tell in this short period of time, I've had the distinct pleasure of making your acquaintance. They've got to depend on a dumb, gutless excuse for a man. That's okay. That's okay. You go be the king of the dung heap down there, and I'll be the king up here. And we'll see who makes out best. And if anything happens to us, you can come up here and fight the things for the damn food. Why, you blessed... Send Judy up when you go down. She'll want to be with me. Who's Judy? That's my girlfriend. Another one. Why didn't you say she was down there? Well, you, you didn't give me much of a chance. Yeah, fair. Okay, I guess I didn't. Judy walked up the cellar steps and into the living room. She was a tall, thin, blonde-haired girl of about 17 and looked as though a puff of wind would blow her away. Tom had a good pair of shoulders on him, but was obviously little more than a kid. Over in the corner, Barbara lay on the couch, eyes closed in a semi-catatonic state. Ben looked them over and his insides contracted. Two nice kids, a crazy girl, and downstairs a whining coward who'd sell you out in a minute. His wife and a sick child. Hi, Judy. Name's Ben. Girl over there on the couch is Barbara. Her brother got killed out there. She's still shook up. I'm, I'm glad you're here, though. I figure more of us, better chance we got. This door is closed, and it stays closed. It won't be opened again ever. Fine. Go ahead and die down there. Harry walked down the steps of his chosen prison, the cellar. There was Helen, Harry's long-suffering wife, a pretty, faded woman. She was bent over a sink, wetting a handkerchief. Her five-year-old daughter lay motionless on an old wooden table. The sound of her breathing was not a good sound. Well, we're safe now. It's boarded up tight. What about Tom and Judy? They want to stay up there, let them. There's two other people up there, a man and a girl. <laughs> we heard the screaming. Yeah, but I didn't know who they were. And I wasn't about to take any unnecessary chances. Of course not, Perry. Is Karen all right? I don't know what it is. She feels warm. Maybe it's shock. Where'd you get the bandage? Some laundry in the basket. I tore a sheet. Let them stay upstairs. Too many ways those monsters can't get in up there. We'll see who's right. We'll see when they come begging me to let them in down here. That's important, isn't it? What? To be right. Everybody else to be wrong. What do you mean by that? Uh, 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 uh. Does, does anyone up here know why we're being attacked? Whatever it is, it isn't just happening here. It's some kind of mass murder. It's going on everywhere. The radio said to stay inside. Radio? There's a radio upstairs. I heard the news bulletin. There's a radio upstairs, and you boarded us in down here? I know what I'm doing. Oh. What did it say? Well. Nothing, nothing. They don't know anything yet. There's mass murder everywhere, and, and people are supposed to be looking for a safe place to hide. Harry, unboard that door. We are staying down here, Helen. Harry, that radio is at least some kind of communication. If the authorities know what's happening, well, they'll send people for us. They'll tell us what to do. How are we going to know what's going on if we lock ourselves in this dungeon? Those people upstairs aren't our enemies. We might not enjoy living together, but dying together isn't going to solve anything. Mr. Cooper, Helen, there's going to be a special announcement on the radio telling us what to do. We've got plenty of food and water, and we can try to help Karen. Let's go up. Don't listen to him. He'll get us all killed. Get your slimy hands off me. You haven't got the guts of a louse. I'm going up there. We'll be up, Tom. Okay, it's your decision. Don't blame me if we all get killed. Once more, the cellar steps echoed with the sound of footsteps. The door was unbolted from the inside, and Harry and his wife appeared, 
The former looking sullen, the latter blinking in the strong electric light. Don't be afraid of me. I'm Helen Cooper, Harry's wife. This place is ridiculous. Look at this. There are a million weak spots up here. All you care about is your own rotten skin. If it's that bad, then why don't you pick up a hammer and do something instead of complaining and moaning all the time? They're gonna get us. We're all gonna die, and I'm still putting up with you. Nag, nag, nag. It's on. It's on. Oh, shut up, will you? Citizens are urged to remain in their homes. Isolated families are in extreme danger. Any escape attempt should be made in heavily armed groups and by motor vehicle, if possible. Fire is also an effective weapon. These beans are highly flammable. We now bring you Sheriff Don Leard, Chief of the County Police. Sheriff, can we defeat these things? We sure can. All you gotta do is shoot for the brain. Or if you ain't got a gun, just lop off the head. A machete ought to do it. Or burn them. Only don't let them get too close. So, you really think you have the situation under control? We're trying our best. Now we'll try like hell to get you. It might take days. So, if you're a large group, head out on your own, or hold up someplace safe and try to get some sort of signal out. So we, so we know where you are. <laughs> you might just get one of those critters and fires and it'll send us a smoke signal. But what exactly are those critters, Sheriff? Oh, they's dead. They's all messed up. Only what brought them back to life, I don't know. Not my concern, either. My job is to put them back in the ground a second time and make sure they stay there. Thank you, Sheriff Dawn. And now, please remain in your homes with all the doors and windows locked and securely fashioned. We will be with you every hour on the hour with updated reports on this national emergency. Well, that sells it. We go. And I say we stay till the cops come. Mister, I have never wanted to bust anyone in the mouth as bad as I want to bust you. Your kid's sick and you want to stay here? It's murder to go out there. We'll be dead after 50 yards. Not in my truck, we won't. You got a truck? Jeez and rice, why didn't you say so? Well, yeah, there's, there's only enough gas to get us up to the main road. Gas pump out front, it's all locked up. The key's got to be somewhere. There's a big key rig down in the basement. Go get it! Are there any jars down there? Jars? Uh, some old fruit jars, I think. We'll get them too. We'll look for some kerosene. We're gonna make ourselves some Molotov cocktails. Toss them out the upstairs window, drive those things back so we can get to the truck and pump. Harry, I don't know why, but you're gonna be responsible for throwing the cocktails and for covering the front door while we get the truck. As soon as we're out of here, lock it up. Then be ready to open up sharp when we get back. I'll need to take the gun then. I gotta have the gun. Like hell you do. What do you think we're gonna use outside? How do I know you and Tom won't just gas up and go? Well, you don't. That's what makes life so interesting. If we leave you, you can just go back down your little funk hole like you've been wanting to do all along. Harry, where'd Helen go to? Downstairs with Karen. So how'd your kid get sick? She was bitten on the arm by one of those things. Look. You or Helen better stay with her at all times. And you gotta tell Helen what to expect and what we're gonna have to do if she don't pull through. You can't do that to her. You heard the radio. If she dies, she won't be the kid you both loved. She'll be a monster. Tom, get Judy, come up here. Keep an eye on Barbara. Harry, you go upstairs and start tossing those Molotov cocktails out the open window. Only don't hit the truck. Once you got a wall of flame going, you come back running downstairs, and as soon as me and Tom hear you, we're going to hit the door. Now you hang on to this pitchfork in case some of them try to get through. Then make sure the door is closed and barred again. As soon as you hear us drive up to the house, open that door pronto. You hear me? Get all the women ready to make a run for it. Listen, Judy, you always have a smile for me. How can you smile like that all the time? Come on, honey. We've got to move. Tom... Are you sure about the phone? Like, really sure? Like, are you really, really, really sure about the phone? The Couldn't you try it one more time? The phone is dead out. If I could only call the folks, they're going to be so worried about us. Everything's going to be all right. As soon as we get to town, we'll call them. They might even be there. I know. Tom, are you sure we're doing the right thing, Tom? What? About getting out of here? Yeah. Well, the radio said... That's the right thing to do. 
We've got to get to a rescue station. I don't know. Come on, honey. You're starting to sound like Mr. Cooper now. But why do you have to go out there? Look, I know how to handle that truck. And I can handle the pump. Ben needs my help out there. You know Harry won't leave. But we're safe in here. Don't you want to stay here with me? For how long, honey? We're safe now, but there's going to be more and more of those things. I know. I know all that. I just don't want you to go, that's all. Where, where's that smile for me? Boy, I could sure use that now. Well, I got work to do, honey. And you, you... We gotta go downstairs. You have to go downstairs now, Barbara. She's right. You have to go downstairs now, just for a little while, until we get back. Then we can all leave. Oh, I'd like to leave, yes. Good luck. You ready upstairs? Yeah. You ready to get a piece of crap? All right. Toss him. Harry opened the window on the second floor. As he looked out, he saw groups of the dead things huddled all over. Some were around the truck. Others were standing in the clumps of trees. Viciously, he began to light the Molotov cocktails and hurl them with all his strength through the window. They burst on the gravel path and the grass beyond. Flames illuminating the things as they drew back moaning softly. Some of the kerosene splashed on them and their bodies flared like dried Christmas trees. While Harry was busy upstairs, Ben and Tom worked feverishly on the door, prying the wood away from the nails as quietly as possible so as not to alert the other things outside. Finally, the last barricade was lifted and soon after they heard Harry's running footsteps on the stairs, they darted out. Go on, go ahead. I'm going with him. Get back in the cellar. No! Judy in a state of panic, ran after Tom. Harry knew his duty. He slammed the door shut in time to see Judy's path blocked by two of the ghouls. By now, Tom had clubbed his way to the truck, climbed into the truck, and was trying to start the engine. Alerted by Judy's screams, Ben turned and drove the stock of his rifle butt into their skulls, grabbed the frightened girl, hurled her into the cab, then jumped into the flat. The engine fired and the truck rocked across the uneven ground then screeched to a halt against the pump. Tom leapt out and fumbled with the lock, but seeing the creatures almost upon him, Ben shoved him back and smashed the lock with his rifle, releasing the gas, which squirted in all directions. Picking up the hose, Tom crammed it into the gas tank, spilling a generous sample on the ground, while Ben continued to fight off the invaders. Neither of them saw the dying flames from the Molotov cocktail spring into life as they sped across the gas-soaked ground, then leap across the rear fender of the truck. The truck's on fire. Get away from the pump! Hang on! Get away from the pump, now! By now, the truck was a fiery comet speeding away into the distance. Suddenly, it exploded into a ball of flames, incinerating its two passengers. Ah! Harry, by now wild with terror, abandoned the locked front door and headed for the cellar. Outside, three ghouls were trying to claw their way in, and Ben quickly smashed their heads. The door was locked. Let me in! Cooper! Let me in! Ben retreated several paces and hopped towards it, using one leg like a battering ram and smashing his way through, just in time to see Harry opening the cellar door. Get over here! Help me fix this door now, you freaking puke bag! I gotta take you out there and feed you to these things. Except, you know what? You're probably too rotten for them to even eat. Helen, come on out of the cellar. Tom and Judy are dead. We're stuck here. Damn! All the lights have gone out. Where's the fuse box? Downstairs, and there's a flashlight on the stairs. I've got to get that gun, Helen. We can go to the cellar. You've got to help me. He's already beaten you up. Next time, he'll kill you. Haven't you done enough damage already? I haven't done any damage. It's him. He's already got two people killed. If I can only get my hand in that gun. Well, the fuses are okay. So, must be power lines are down. I left the flashlight on top of the stairs. Why don't you go down and see your daughter? Her breathing sounds kind of strange. They're trying to get in again. Harry, give me a hand over here. Sure, I'll give you a hand. What are you doing with the gun, man? How do you keep these things out? You keep them up, big guy. Oh, you're not so brave without your gun, are you? I'm going to the cellar, and I'm taking Helen and that crazy girl with me. And you can stay up here, and I hope they get you quick. Ben turned towards the window where a number of the ghouls were pounding on the timbers. 
When one plank was loose enough, Ben ripped it aside, then hurled it like a javelin at Harry. It caught him in the arm, and with a cry of pain, he dropped the gun. Ah! Ben pounced, and as Harry backed away, he picked it up, cocked it, and fired, blasting a hole in Harry's chest and knocking him headfirst down the cellar steps. Helen had no time to be a grieving widow. She had other things to think about. Two ghouls had succeeded in breaking through the window and had seized her by the hair and neck. Ben clubbed at them and shot them both in the face. Freed, Helen ran screaming down the cellar steps, falling over the body of her husband in the dark and landing in a heap at the bottom. Oh! Mommy, I hurt. Baby, is that you? Oh, darling, are you feeling better? Mommy, pick me up. Baby, come to mommy. That's a good girl. Will I always be a good girl? Of course, baby. You're my little angel. Well, I don't feel like a good girl. What do you mean? Oh, Karen, you're so hot. You're burning up. I'm sorry, mommy. <laughs> Please! It hurts! Oh, oh. Karen wasn't feeling better. Karen wasn't feeling anything at all, except the lust for warm human flesh. For she was dead. Her mother's fall had interrupted her as she was chewing through her father's arm. But she had always liked her mother better anyway. As Helen picked her up, Karen in turn picked up a rusty garden trowel and plunged it again and again into her mother's breast, throat, and stomach. She continued long after Helen's screams had ceased until the flesh was a ragged ruin. Then contently, she dug her hands into the gaping wounds and began to feast. While upstairs, Ben was fighting like a madman. The barricades were crumbling under an onslaught of 50 or so ghouls. Barbara, shocked into consciousness again, was fighting alongside him. One ghoul sank his teeth into her neck until Ben blew off most of its head. She ran screaming from the room straight into the path of a group of undead who were advancing towards her. They fell upon her ripping and tearing as they dragged her outside. She fought on automatically until she looked dead into the face of her brother Johnny, who had his fingers locked for the kill. Johnny, no! Mercifully, her brain cut out and seconds later her body followed as she was engulfed. There would be nothing left of her to be reanimated. Ben, outnumbered, returned to the cellar. From behind him he felt hands crawling at his legs, looked down and saw the bloody face of Karen. He picked her up and smashed her against the wall, but she staggered to her feet and attacked again, but too late to stop him leaping down the cellar steps and slamming the door behind him. Little by little, the pounding stopped, and from the shuffling noises above his head, he could tell that the ghouls were leaving the house to feast on the body of Barbara and to wait for easier victims. His fingers closed around the flashlight, and he held it upward to check out his new territory. The first thing he saw was the shiny, bald head of Harry, then his staring eyes and half-chewed arm. But the eyes were no longer staring. One of them twitched, and then the other. And slowly the limbs jerked, like those of a man under electroshock therapy. It wasn't easy to hold the light on the thing that wouldn't die and aim the rifle at the same time, but Ben managed. The top of his head was blown away, and most of Harry's brain splashed against the far wall. Helen's body was in a far worse state of mutilation. Karen had an unholy appetite for a five-year-old, but it too began to roll over and play living until a bullet obliterated her face and head. Now, there was no one else left. All of them were dead, except him. As he threw down his rifle in exhaustion, he felt a pain in his right arm. Looking down, he noticed the torn shirt and parallel lacerations caused by Karen's teeth. So now his name was on the waiting list of the undead club. Sinking into a corner, Ben wept uncontrollably, then worn out, fell asleep. His last waking thoughts were on his two children. Hey, deputy, get in there and check out the house. If you see anything, hit it right between the eyes. That's it, man. That's the spirit. Kill him and burn him. Don't let any of them get away. It was now or never for Ben. He 
eased the bolt from the cellar door. Still sick with fear, he glanced widely about, but there was no one dead or undead on the premises. Outside, the sounds of activity grew closer. A great feeling of relief welled up within him, leaving his legs like jelly. He paused for a moment to regain his strength. Maybe the wounds in his arms were not that bad. In a few hours, he would be safe in a hospital bed. Maybe his kids were okay. Maybe he could get word to them and see them in a day or two. Pumped up with the life-given force of the morning sun, he crept to the window and cautiously drew back what remained of the curtain. Damn it, I told you not to shoot. There may be people in there. Ain't no one in there alive, Chief. Place is about demolished. Whatever in there is long dead. Well, let's go inside and take a peek. Careful now, just one body here. Cut off his head quick. I'll take a look upstairs. You know, I wonder who was there. Looks like they sure put up a fight. Couldn't have been Mrs. Miller, Chief. There's no sign of her or her grandson anywhere. I guess we ain't ever gonna know. It don't matter a damn anyway. (laughs) 